uh, Secretary of State Grant Arbatz, it's a pleasure to welcome you here for our first ever public event of the Yamora Solutions in uh, Brussels. And in particular, I think if there's one uh, group of stakeholders that I would like to uh, express my gratitude towards, it's the numerous ambassadors who are present here and the family members of, of Rotary who are here, very numerous present tonight. We have tonight representatives of a lot of countries. We have representatives from Pakistan, India, Sri Lanka, Thailand, Peru, Panama, Guatemala, Bolivia, El Salvador, Argentina, Belgium, Kenya, Nigeria, Uganda, Jordan, Yemen, Denmark, and Rwanda. And we are very great that all these countries have expressed their interest in our solutions and in the theme of how to empower young people to take action on water. A very special welcome also to the little fun there. We are tonight in touch with the world. Thanks to a support uh, from the United Nations, we are able to live stream this event and people across the planet will be following uh, the speeches tonight, the presentations by the Young Water Fellows. Ladies and gentlemen, explaining Young Water Solutions, what Young Water Solutions is, is not an easy thing. Water problems are very abstract to explain. Convincing people that young people can make a difference is not easy. But whereas normally my job is very difficult, tonight it will be very easy because we have the wonderful presence of 13 Young Water Fellows, people who actually in themselves embody what Young Water Solutions is. Young Water Solutions is an organization born from the belief that young people with their talent, with their determination, determination to act, with their self-learning skills, with their energy, can make a difference and can be solution providers for uh, water problems. And I hope that tonight you will recognize these unique characteristics which I just cited in the young people who will be speaking in front of you. <coughs> the political acknowledgement that young people can play a role in development is huge. I would say that it's very fastly growing and it is almost unanimous today. But the action to give young people the tools that they need to play that role in development is still very, very slow. And that is actually why we created in 2014 Young Water Solutions, first as an initiative hosted inside Good Planet and then as an autonomous uh, international non-profit organization. Everything started with one small project uh, in Burkina Faso, then in Nigeria, Bangladesh, again Burkina Faso, and Uganda, again Burkina Faso. Quickly all the projects started following each other, and this year, in 2017, we finally could come up with our first flagship program, the Young Water Fellowship. And we are very happy to present this program tonight to you. The Young Water Fellowship is, in some words, all about empowering young people to implement their own water projects by giving them technical support, by giving them seed funding, and by giving them mentorship support. So the young people you will see tonight are actually applicants of a um, call for applications that reached 1 million people, young people worldwide. We had more than 800 eligible valid applications, and we selected the 13 very <coughs> best or most relevant that we could find. I must say that if I say that there are 800 applications from more than 100 countries that we received, this is a sign. This is a sign that young people across the world are ready to act, they have the skills to act, but they need your support, they need funding to be able to implement actions. And that's why we will not stop here, we will not stop with the Young Water Fellowship and with the young, uh, with the young people that you see today. Our plan for Young Water Solutions in the next year is to grow. First, we want to grow the Young Water Fellowship as a program. We will replicate this program. We will repeat it next year with a new global edition of the Young Water Fellowship. Second, we will also organize regional chapters of the program. We hope to organize Young Water Fellowships with a specific scope, for instance, in East Africa, in MENA, uh, in Asia. And we will org also, third, organize thematic chapters. Uh, next year, we have the ambition to organize a Young Water Fellowship edition which will be exclusively on social entrepreneurship and on supporting young people who want, to who want to work on water and who have a social business model to implement their actions. But I would say that the Young Water Fellowship as a model is not all we do and we have the aim to go beyond. Because the Young Water Fellowship is still about projects, it's still about the program. The final ambition of Young Water Solutions is really to achieve systemic change. We want to work with governments, with regional authorities, to find the answers when we talk about empowering young people which are more at a structural level. You could, for, inst for example, think about strategy palace, uh, policy for making sure that microfinance institutions will more easily get in touch with young entrepreneurs in their country, with young entrepreneurs who have water countries, 
We could also think about sitting together with authorities and thinking all these missing water services in the country, how can we translate them in jobs for young people? These are just some ideas we are at the moment developing and in a few months from now we will be back in touch with you uh, with next step on these ideas. Ladies and gentlemen, as I said before, today it's still a really big challenge to find funding, to find people who want to support and the role of young people to implement water projects. But we are today in the room because, in this room, because we have some unique partners here in Belgium and France who wanted to support the idea of the Young Water Fellowship. And I would like to thank all of them, especially Tom Hotel, who is hosting us here tonight, the Flemish government, who did a significant effort to support this program and, and the training aspect, Aquafin, a Flemish company, and the local authority saint omer Global Water Partnership, the International Secretary for Water, and above all, um, Agence de loire toi Picardie and also the Brussels government. Agence de loire toi Picardie is um, at this point the biggest sponsor of this program. We are very grateful because it is their support that made it possible for us as a small organization to make this really something that was professionalized. And the Brussels government has done a particular effort uh, to uh, allow us to expand our program to additional countries and we are currently working with the uh, Secretary of State uh, debates on empowering young people in Morocco and Congo. Unfortunately, the Congolese candidate cannot be with us tonight uh, because of um, a problem in administrative processes. Ladies and gentlemen, before I hand the floor uh, to uh, Antonella Valiente and uh, the Secretary of State Debats, I want to thank one single person. I have thanked organizations, partner organizations, but there's also one single person who made this possible, and that's Antonella Valiente, director of this organization. <laughs> She has spent not only very stressing days, endless days, also endless and sleep, sleepless nights, and as Young Water Solutions, on behalf of the Board of Young Water Solutions, and I think all the fellows, we are really grateful for her efforts. Ladies and gentlemen, that being said, I wish you all a great evening. I hope that the human stories that you will from, hear from these wonderful people will stay with you, and above all, I hope that you will not, never forget that young people are water solutions. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Mark. Um, and now we invite the Secretary of State of the Brussels Government for Development Cooperation, Mr. Bass. Thank you all. Dear ambassadors and dear Young Water Fellows, thanks to you, all of you, Young Brilliant Fellows, for your commitment in this project and I really hope that you enjoy this wonderful, unique experience and I also hope that you enjoy being here in Brussels, capital of uh, Belgium but uh, also the capital of Europe. So enjoy your stay and I hope you have some time to discover the, the wonderful cultural events, a lot of great restaurants and cafes and so on and I have some good addresses if you need some information. I see a wonderful crowd here, but I know that many other people are watching us, people from all over the world, thanks to the live stream, and it's an effort that you and me, that we really, really appreciate. It took me out to you, heel ook plezier om hier samen met jullie op de pitch te zijn van Young Water Fellowships. En we hebben natuurlijk in Brussel, en ook in de rest van het land, geen tekort aan water. We hebben zelfs vaak wat water te veel, zeker in deze regenachtige tijden. Maar dit soort van campagnes, projecten, zijn heel erg belangrijk om mensen te sensibiliseren dat, alhoewel wij geen problemen, dat in andere landen wel een issue is. En dat die solidariteit belangrijk is. Water is leven. En, c'est vrai, l'eau c'est la vie, et je dirais même plus, l'eau est important pour la survie. Parce que nous savons que nous avons besoin de l'eau au quotidien, pour boire, bien évidemment, mais aussi pour faire manger, pour l'hygiène tous les jours, pour soigner les maladies, tout cela, on a besoin de l'eau. Et donc, c'est dans ce contexte-là que notre solidarité internationale se situe. Mais on peut aussi quand même annoncer une bonne nouvelle, c'est que petit à petit, grâce effectivement à des projets comme les vôtres, on avance aussi, et on est en train de gagner le combat pour avoir accès à l'eau dans beaucoup d'autres pays. 
2.6 billion people have gained access to drinking water since 1990. 2.6 billion people. Because we know the methods and also the models, the technology exists, and it's continually being perfected. And most important, we can bring it now to communities who need it most. And we help them to spread it amongst their own region and think of, of new ways, new ways of gaining water. En dat is natuurlijk wat jullie ook doen, via nieuwe innovatieve manieren. We proberen ervoor te zorgen dat we ook in andere landen die toegang tot drinkwater, dat we dat kunnen faciliteren. En misschien weet u dat niet, maar Brussel Schilles heeft twee samenwerkingsovereenkomsten. Eén in Marokko, de regio de Van Abad, en één in Congo, de regio van Kinshasa. En we merken daar al wel de, de budgettaire inspanningen, zeker en gelijk wat Europa doet, vrij gering is dat we toch erin slagen om eigenlijk een, een echte impact te hebben op het leven van duizenden mensen. Dat we het leven van duizenden mensen echt wel vooruit gaan. Et donc oui, je dirais que même avec un budget qui reste modeste pour la région, on est très actif, mais on va encore faire plus. Et je suis sensiblement sensible aussi par rapport aux femmes, parce que nous savons que dans beaucoup de pays, c'est les femmes aussi qui sont chargées d'aller chercher de l'eau et qui doivent parfois, vous le savez, hein, je vous l'ai rencontré à nouveau, faire des kilomètres et des kilomètres, elles sont des heures parties pour aller chercher un peu d'eau. Et tout cela fait aussi que ben, elles sont quelque part privées d'autres activités. L'école, c'est difficile quand on va quotidiennement faire des heures pour aller chercher de l'eau. Le travail, l'épanouissement, ça reste difficile. Mais en même temps, l'eau qu'elles apportent sauve des vies. Donc c'est toujours un lieu d'eau aussi. And when women have access to a nearby source of clean drinking water or toilet or when they have knowledge about food hygiene and practices like hand washing and we also have a wonderful project in Kinshasa with UNICEF where we help schools and, and young people to help them well to learn better hygiene. Très important parce que les maladies sont moins ils vont beaucoup moins plus à l'école. When we do that we know that not only the ladies, but also their families and children, they really gain in huge, huge social process. En daarom vragen wij u om deze projecten te ondersteunen. Van deze schitterende mensen die ervoor kiezen om een deel van hun vrije tijd, eigenlijk wat u toch allemaal doet, ja, te investeren in sociaal engagement. So I ask you really from the bottom of my heart, invest in these young fellows. And as we have done with the Brussels region, to make the life of thousands more healthy, easy, and just plain human. Thank you all. Thank you very much, Mr. Bet. Um, as Bart was announcing before, um, and to give a bit more context about the fellowship or, or to talk about what the fellowship proposes, the model that we find uh, important uh, is to provide training, mentorship, and SIM funding as a, as a package for these young people. This week is, uh, represents the training part of it. The 13 young people that you will hear in some minutes, they have been here they have been trained by different ed experts from international and uh, internationally recognized organizations in different topics such as um, integrated water management, water supply and sanitation, um, leadership, um, ad ad advanced problem solving, and participative um, planning, and different topics that are very relevant for the projects. So what we have proposed is not only to, um, to learn this content, uh, that would, normal cases they would probably take months in, in university courses, but to, um, to consider these elements for their own projects. So every day they have, uh, they have reflected how the different concepts that they have been learning during that day can be applied for the projects for improvement. So 
this is a map that shows what Bart was saying before about the 800 applications in the world. We have uh, chosen fellows from all different regions, um, and you will be hearing them in, in a minute. As I have two announcements. As Ms. Devas was saying before, this event is being live streamed in our Facebook page, um, facebook.com. Uh, uh, how is it? Slash. Yeah, slash. Slash. No, it's not slash. Um, and the UN, your water, is sharing that. So uh, we also thank your water very much. And we say to all the people that are watching us, that if you have any questions to make to the Young Water Fellows, you can on Twitter use the hashtag Young Water Fellows, and we will be trying to answer those questions. Um, you will be, as they are many, they will have some minutes to introduce their projects, and later on, during the cocktail reception and dinner for those games, it will be the moment to exchange with the fellows. So, thank you very much again to all the partners, and we will divide the presentations in three topics. Um, one of them is sanitation, water supply, and water quality, as their projects are related to those. So we will start by sanitation, and we ask Alice from Uganda to come first to, to share her project with us. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Oh, yeah, strength to break the ice. Good evening, everyone. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. My name is Alice Nagere, and I come from Uganda. It's called the Pan of Africa. It's very beautiful, very, very beautiful. But we also have our own problems. Um, it's among the least developed countries. And uh, part of it, uh, people are very poor. Well, my name is Alice, and I come from Kasokoso Slum. My family fell in hard times, and uh, we had to move to the slums because that's what we could afford. So I grew up in the slums for some part of my life, and I'm very happy to be here. Because 10 years ago, if you had told me I would be standing somewhere in Brussels, I would tell you you're crazy. Yeah. So I'm very grateful. Thank you, Young Water Solutions. And thank you so much to Aqua Finna sponsor, and thank you so much to everyone who's sponsoring everything. Thank you. So this, this is. Um, supposed to be a, a water system, a stream in Kasokoso, but people have um, turned it into this, not because they want, but because of the situation they live in. Well, I lived in the slums, and Kasokoso slum has over 100,000 people living there. In a household, it's a small room. Things that you use here as a lobby or a toilet, such a thing houses over 10 people in a family, because that's an average of one family. Um, the property is so immense, and one of the biggest tragedies is high death rate because of water and sanitation problems. <laughs> Such things happen. So at, since you're very poor, one of the things that doesn't concern you is having a toilet. So most of the people um, wait till night time, like now. This is when they'll take their bath outside, and then that's when you get um, the relaxation to take to do your business. Number two, you get like a polythene bag or some materials, and you wrap it properly. So th th this is what comes out of the streams when people throw their their no, I can't use that one. But <laughs> yes, uh, their number two somewhere because they have to put it somewhere. So um. A year ago, I worked with Big Bidi Camp, it's the biggest world refugee camp, and we were taught on wash, trained, so I also went as a trainer to train in wash. And uh, when I came back this year, I got so interested in developing my community. So I went back to Kasokoso where I grew up. And on my first community visit, a young boy came in front of me, and he, he's like the Brussels monument, the young boy feels. <laughs> yeah, but this is what happens, and it's normal. I couldn't put adults' pictures because, yeah, it's, it's a normal thing. It will be 11 a.m., and someone will pull it out, and they'll do their stuff, and then they'll move on to the next thing. So, this is one of the problems I realized. When I sat down with the people in the community, they have very many problems. But sanitation is causing a lot of problems because 
their children get sick from these diseases like cholera, diarrhea, dysentery. So it's a poverty cycle. When the child is sick, you won't go to work, then you won't have money, and then the child will fall sick again because you're not giving them food. The cycle continues. So one of the problems they, 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 they spotted was wash. And uh, on pointing out, we decided on, on latrine. In a household of Kasokoso, people a day, in a household of 10 people, on average you earn 2 euros. That's very little in Europe, but in, in Africa, in Uganda, that's good money for a household, especially in Islam, to be, to be earned. So we came up, came up with a solution of building pit latrines, and these pit latrines, we want to involve the community so that these people have ownership of the program. I work with Alibet Consult, so we are spearheading this program, Kabuyonjo, which Young Water Solutions and Aquafin are sponsoring. We are going to build pit latrines. There are going to be three, female, male, and then the third one will be specially designed for children. Because even if we do latrines and we don't involve the children, all the vulnerable groups, it doesn't really make sense. The children will still use other, other streams or the roadside or something else. We are going to involve the community. We are empowering youth and women. They are going to collect recyclable materials, and that's what we use for roofing. So the whole community will be involved, and the women who we are going to train, they are going to be able to get to collect fees. It will be about 0 0.01 cents, but it will help in maintaining the, the toilets, it will help in equipping them with some employment uh, opportunities, and uh, in the pro program, when the program is sustainable, we will do more than you. We are starting with one. I would like to thank you very much and invite you all to join me in this project. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Alice. And now we invite Aina, and we need the help of a little bit of advice. <laughs> Biggest productive ages, and 
I need your collaboration to make Indonesian children a better life. We provide a proper sanitation. Thank you so much. Thank you, Anna, very much. Uh, we have learned about the sanitation pro problems in Africa. We have learned about sanitation problems in Asia. Now it's the turn of Latin America. This sanitation section is geographically well represented. So we invite Diego now from Peru. Good. Good evening. My name is Diego Suero. I am from Peru. I am an agriculture engineer. Uh, my, uh, my project is called Artificial Wetlands in a, Parqui a Parquilla community. Uh, Parquilla community is located in Cusco, which is really famous uh, about Machu Picchu. Uh, but uh, all the most of the rural communities in Cusco they have so many problems related to water and sanitation. Uh, for example, in this community, we identified that this, this, the community square, where it was so important for the community, for the dynamic of the community. Uh, people here have uh, meetings where they choose or decide what problems are important to the community. Uh, there is also a church in this square. Um, people is really religious, uh, so people use this square a lot. But the problem is that this square doesn't have a constant water supply. There is not enough pressure during the late the day to to ensure a constant water supply. Also, people uh, still practice open defecation, which is a really big problem. Uh, uh, people uh, spend sometimes the whole day in this square, but it, it doesn't have a single seat or shower. Uh, also, there is no environmental or sanitation education in this square. So, to solve this, this problem, we, uh, we will combine sanitation, uh, reuse of the community waste, uh, improve the, the community public space, and also sanitation and environment education. For example, for sanitation, we will implement a cistern and a tank and a, and a pump. So we will use uh, water, we will fill the, the cistern during the night and we will use uh, the tank during the day. Uh, to treat wastewater we will use uh, artificial wetland, which is a really uh, efficient technology, it's a, a natural way to treat wastewater. So uh, it's also cheaper than the conventional technologies that the government usually uh, use. Uh, the treated wastewater we will use to irrigate ornamental plants that way we will try to improve uh, the community public space. Also, the, the, the we will reuse the community uh, waste, for example, the tires maybe, will reuse uh, to improve the, the space. Uh, and also we will, we will make workshops with the community to make these people uh, 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 see how good it is to have a, a, a better environment. Um, so we will, like I said, we will using artificial wetlands. These are some photos for a previous project. We already uh, implement wetlands in a particular rural community. In this case, was uh, we, we solved the problem uh, of sanitation in the elementary school of a particular. People, uh, children, uh, still have to open defecate in this school. So we implement a bathroom. We also treat wastewater with artificial wetlands and reuse the treated wastewater to irrigate and a playground for the, for the children. So uh, if you think as well that this is the kind of uh, solutions that rural communities need, not only in Peru but worldwide, uh, please talk to us, support this kind of, uh, of solution. Thank you. Thank you, Diego. We will now start the water supply section, that is the biggest section of the night. Um, and we will hear about different technologies um, to extract water, underground water, or rainwater, or surface water, to supply uh, to supply this uh, human right to uh, population. So we will uh, ask Ivan from Rwanda to start. Good evening. Um, my mother language is Semuraho. So, um, 
My name is Yvette Shime, and I'm here to represent uh, Iliwa Clean Water Delivery Limited uh, in Rwanda, uh, the beautiful country of Thousand Hills and Thousand Stories. And um, in, we are located in the eastern part of Rwanda. Um, when I and my family, uh, we live in Kigali City, in the city, main city of Rwanda. So we moved from there in 2015 and went to live in the eastern part of Rwanda. And then when we moved there, I saw the two, how people uh, suffered for decades because of lack of clean water. And it was even hard for me and my family to settle there because water was extremely expensive. And with that experience, that boosted my attention to learn how people in this community really manage to live with such expensive water. And I could see some poor families around. So I wondered how really they managed to live. So with that interest, I began to make research to see how people manage. And some, they suffered. Uh, women were no longer doing any other productive activity other than spending hours and days in water collection centers and kids the same, missing schools uh, was the habit. So with that, um, that's when uh, I began to think of how I can now create the solution for these people. I was only 19 years old by then. I didn't have enough uh, knowledge to come up with a big engineering <laughs> solution. So uh, this is how I started. So. Um, we started going to get the water from the nearby lake called Muhazi, treat it with a UV ultraviolet a water purifier, and then we supply in people's homes uh, using bicycles, and they had to pay at a very affordable price, which was like 10 uh, times less than the price they used to pay with the normal other water supply, which was even not safe for using. And then with this, uh, this is when now I got uh, a chance to be part of the Young Water uh, Fellows in this year, where I'll be able now to get the funding uh, to do um, this, uh, this project. So for now, one of the challenges we face is to get the water from Lake Mohazi. We, we hire the car, so it's very expensive and we can't even uh, manage our water supply. So for now, we'll be able now to extract the water from the nearby spring using a solar energized pump. After extracting this water, we treat it with a system called ultraviolet water purifier, and then we store it in our water tanks, and we supply it in people's homes using pipes, and even we put them in kiosks where they will be nearby people. And we believe this is going to hire, I mean, to give so many people employment opportunities uh, this is going to help people in Kanonzo district have access to water and even it will have, because we sell it at an affordable price, we believe it will also help us to be able to grow and expand to more communities. And uh, we believe uh, water scarcity is, a, is not an issue not only in Rwanda but in several communities. So we welcome you uh, to be part of our impact cycle. Thank you so much. Now we invite Shadrach from Nigeria to share the Good evening, everyone. I feel so blessed and thankful to be standing here today. My name is Shadrach Kusu. I'm from the States, Nigeria. Um, for some years, two years or so, I've been working with um, an NGO in Nigeria and we'll be supporting communities to end open defecation and improve their sanitation and hygiene practices. And really we've um, had good success because we've supported a lot of uh, communities to achieve that. But um, in the course of this I found a gap because um, Sanitation and hygiene, the benefits of it cannot be achieved completely without access to safe water. And these same communities were getting water from streams and ponds. And these 
water will dry up during the dry season. That means they have women and children have to travel distances of up to 10 kilometers to get water. This exposed them to risk like molestation, abuse, rape, and all of that. And women miss um, work, work hours, and children miss schools. And that's really counterproductive. I found a solution which is to provide these communities access to safe water um, through construction and rehabilitation of hand pump boreholes. With this, we will also, as a sustainability strategy, we will form a team, a community team in each of the communities, which will be trained, which will be comprised of women and youth, and they will be trained on simple maintenance and repairs. With that, they will be able to you know, own their own project and sustain it for long. Um, this will also empower them, and they will be able to go to other neighboring communities that have had um, hand pump holes, bore holes that are, 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 are bad, and then carry out repairs and maintenance for a fee. Um, this will also increase the income of the women and the youth. Um, there are, with the support of Young Water Solutions, I will be able to reach about a thousand people in two different communities. And um, that is um, just a fraction of the problem because there are several other communities that are underserved and live in very dire situations. With your support and collaborations, we will together be able to reach the underserved communities. Thank you very much. Thank you, Shadrach, and apologies for uh, the technology failure in the PowerPoint. So as you have already seen, the next person to share her project is Lina Ganesadala. Good evening, everyone. I'm really great, uh, grateful and happy to share my project with all of you this night. Um, actually, this is a little bit of story uh, before the presentation of the project. I work in, in territorial development in my country, in El Salvador. I uh, work with local governments, with women and youth. And I'm a researcher, and uh, one day, <laughs> We, two women of uh, Kiboa Valley Network of Women, can participate in a training of uh, rainwater harvest. And when they back to El Salvador, they told me, we want to work in water. And that's the history that my project has started. I'm economist and I have to research to an option. I make many partners to implement this pilot phase that I present you. So the project is about rainwater harvesting in Kiboa Valley in El Salvador. Um, around 1.5 million of Salvadorians do not have water in their homes. This access is different for between urban and rural areas. In rural areas, 64% of homes don't have access to water. So the people have to walk long distance to, uh, to get water. And this is the worst for women because in my country we have a serious problem with security. So uh, the proposal solution for, uh, as I told you, we have to find a partner. We make uh, a lie to, with an enterprise that we implement this model that is developed in Honduras our neighbor country. So this is a bag, yeah, you heard, well, it's a bag of real membrane um, and can store 25,000 liters of water and you can harvest with the channels in the standard roof and later the system can put your, so more close to the, their home. So the women that don't have need to walk to get water. So also this system has the capacity to estorage the equivalent to five truck systems. So this is a high capacity to estorage. Um, um, we are in a pilot phase. We implement seven systems of rain harvest um, 
in seven municipalities of El Salvador, and is a country in Central America. So uh, we contribute to the access of water of 100 families, around 400 people, and 540% of that persons are women, and also is a project uh, imposed by women. Um, to find my uh, to end my presentation, I want to show you some pictures of this experience. Um, I always said that this project is not innovative for just the use of a technology. It's innovative because we invite women to make another role than the traditional role that the society that the society assigned to the woman. So in the day that we installed the system, all guys participate, uh, the women make all the parts of the, of the install, and also the, the women invite local governments to participate in funding their projects. For fine, I want to show, uh, share that we want to get more with women in Kibua Valley, and I know with Young Water Fellows and Young Water Solution Organization and with your support we can get more. Thank you so much. Thank you, Vilma. I want to take the opportunity to thank all the people that are watching us live stream and who are commenting and interacting through this channel. So we will now welcome Asdin from Morocco. Bonsoir messieurs, je m'appelle Ruta Esté, je suis marocain, je suis membre au sein d'une association qui s'intéresse au sujet de la gestion de l'eau au Maroc. Donc, le projet que je vais présenter, c'est un projet qui touche la problématique de l'accès à l'eau potable dans, les milieux, dans le milieu rural. Alors déjà au Maroc, et il y a 20 ans, le taux d'accès au Maroc, le taux d'accès à l'eau, il était de l'ordre de 20%. Et aujourd'hui, grâce aux efforts, grâce aux efforts fixés, on, a, on est arrivé à 100% dans les villes et un taux d'accès à l'eau à de l'ordre de 95% dans le monde rural. Et malheureusement, cependant, il y a des, des villages qui sont privés de l'eau. Et même, il y a des, des écoles qui sont touchées et dans l'infrastructure sanitaire et aussi ils ont un déficit dans l'infrastructure sanitaire. Alors, pour résoudre ce problème, on a... Bon, on pense à la construction d'un puits à proximité de... de ce village, un village situé à Kinitra, pour faciliter l'accès à l'eau pour cette population. Donc le puits sera creusé sur plusieurs mètres de profondeur et ensuite entretenu par la population. Donc comme vous voyez, c'est une action, c'est une réalisation associative qui vient résoudre plusieurs problèmes rencontrés par les habitants au quotidien notamment l'éloignement à l'accès à l'eau potable, euh, aussi le manque de moyens pour le retrait de l'eau, souvent c'est des moyens traditionnels qui nécessitent un effort physique, et surtout ce projet va permettre de réduire la surexploitation des, des femmes et des enfants scolarisés pour euh, s'approvisionner en eau. Alors, merci pour votre attention. Like to invite Marley from Guatemala. Good night, everyone. Uh, thank you for staying here. I'm, my name is Marley Pinaco. I'm from a small village from Guatemala. And I want to share with you a small story about my 
experience with light with water. When I since when I was a, a child, all my members are having difficulty uh, getting access to water. We have to uh, go with my friends and my neighbors to the ravines to get some liters of water. And we had to uh, walk a long distance. So this is my village, Panama King. And when I saw that problem, and I, I think that it was from uh, nine years ago. So the problem is about water scarcity. And I had an idea to uh, have a project for the rainwater harvesting building the systems. And so you can see there are some um, a few pictures from my village. And so I thought about this project because we uh, have a long rain system in Guatemala of seven months. And so my idea is uh, building uh, systems and with 50% uh, of recycled material and 50% within material. And so the reason I'm sending here with you or in front of you today is because I still like the uh, resources to build more uh, system with my community. And if you want to help me, make sure that when, when a now one child will missing school because they have to go and look for some water and they, they don't go to school sometimes and it's worse in the classes and so that's all thank you. been working in the water uh, since then to date and last two last year I was in the Doma to the village called Babai where they had no access to safe and clean water since 1972. With support from uh, UNDP I made it possible for the community for the for the school of Babai primary school to access safe and clean water for the first time. This is the life of community where they depend on a natural spring uh, around their village to get water. And you can imagine the life where people they live without having a safe and clean water. Just imagine it's your home, it's your hotel, yes, you, you check in the hotel and there is no safe and clean water. That's the, that the life of people who live there. And now, I want to bring this to more, uh, to be more accessible but to community outside the school. And my solution will be uh, installing a solar powered uh, pump within the borehole that I built last year uh, at the Babayu Primary School so as I can pump more water to the village where people can access it and be well managed uh, uh, for them to access the water. But again, uh, Due to climate change and the global increase of our temperature, this community they depend on rain fed agriculture. So what I'm going to do is also to introduce a demonstration farm where I'll train the community to practice climate uh, smart agriculture 
then they can upscale the, the, the knowledge from the demonstration farm to their plot. This uh, can only be possible if we cooperate together. No one is, can do everything alone. So with the effort, it can be done. Thank you. Thank you, Daddy. We'll go back now to Latin America and we'll listen to Ricardo from Colombia. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Uh, okay, my name is uh, Ricardo Enrique Torres. I'm from Colombia. I'm an environmental engineering student. Um, I'm really happy to be today here. So, first, uh, I want to thank my family uh, because they are uh, the principal reason because I am here today. And they are my uh, work group. Uh, so, our project, my project, or our project is Ecomuro H2O Plus Mass, uh, H2O Plus, is about collecting rainwater or harvesting rainwater, reusing uh, the pet bottles, and uh, re uh, reusing or uh, reuse the, the, the harvest water. And it's based in the uh, circular economy and the, in the appropriate technology, Obviously, with uh, a social responsibility. The place is uh, La Comuna Cuatro de Alto de Cazuca, this is, that is uh, uh, in Bogota, Colombia. That the person if, uh, in that place don't have uh, access to safe and clean water, but they have uh, one thing that is so important, that is uh, the conscience or uh, the culture of harvest rainwater. They, uh, we uh, associate the rainwater uh, with um, uh, tragedies or whatever, but they harvest that water and uh, do it across uh, that uh, containers. So our solution is build the Ecomuro. The Ecomuro is a tank, a vertical tank, uh, built with uh, pet bottles interconnected, and uh, we have uh, recollected harvest water but after we use in uh, so many uh, labors, first, uh, are the most important, the, the toilet, uh, our project is really important because we uh, have uh, an environmental uh, education or do an environmental education at the most important, uh, do access or uh, have access to the safe water. Uh, thank you so much. I want to... Uh, I'm very happy because uh, the Young Water Solution gave me the opportunity to be here and uh, all our um, sponsors and uh, ambassadors, thank you for being here. We have a really uh, amazing project and it will be really amazing if you can help, uh, not me, uh, or all of us, because I, I'm really happy and uh, the connection that we have with my old uh, fellows is so cool. It's really cool, and we, we, I, we want really replace my project in all that countries. So thank you so much. And come on. Gracias, Ricardo. Uh, what he says is true. This group has a, a very beautiful energy. Um, they get on well, very, very well. Um, so we're, we're very lucky with this first cohort, and I am. Happy to introduce you to John from Kenya. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, my name is John Tumain from Kenya. Um, I work with my minority communities, mostly in the northern part of Kenya. And um, shall we talk about that? Yeah, these are ladies. Yeah. So, man, don't teach yourself you don't use water. You use water, but you're not there. <coughs> this is East Pokot in Baringo County. My project is about harvesting rainwater using sand dam technology in in North Baringo, where, 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 where we don't have access to clean water because this is a volcanic active place. You cannot think about 
then if you see the bohol, the chances, the chances of the bohol being successful will fall something less between 2 and 3 percent. A, a case in point, there are only seven bohols in Baringo County, and out of the seven, none is useful to human use because the fluoride levels is at a level of 70 percent fluorine in one liter. Yeah. She's the average the average Pocot lady will walk for seventy kilometers in search for water for men and better. So where is the problem? The problem is that we don't have clean water. What do I bring on board? I bring I want, I wish, I pray that we can make these people access clean water and and disturb clean water through this technology. So, what's the center? Yeah, this is center. So, you'd be like, it's full of sun, I don't see water. Yeah, because there's water in the shallow of there. So, a center works like you blockade the river with only a wall of two feet. Then, when it rains in uplands of Kenya, this place flood. Then the sand acts as an active, an active storage of water. So when when the water is stored there, and you sink, you sink a shallow well of 10 to 15 meters, you are going to get water. These people are going to sit, and these people are going to keep on giving, keeping and living a good life as you do people. It's been a pleasure being in this platform and how I pray, how I will come you on board. Ladies and gentlemen, come on. Leonardo da Vinci once said, the force, the force that drives nature is water. If we don't have nature, we are not there. It's a call. Come on on board. Thank you. The last uh, section of, the, of this presentation is about water quality and our last two fellows will, uh, both of them come actually from South Asia, so we first welcome Purva from India. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Purva and I'm a biotechnology engineer from India. My project is to set up um, decentralized biochar-based drinking water filtration units in Delhi slums and to set them up as social businesses for the women residents. These are some of the videos I've captured over the past few years working in the slums. I was part of a project where we tried to set up commercial um, activated carbon-based water filters and after a couple of years, we were forced to see that they were just not economically viable. Um, these are communities um, living in squalid conditions. And um, even if they have a pipeline, even if you set up a unit, there's still no way for them to access uh, clean drinking water. So I started looking for environmentally friendly and uh, affordable alternatives. Biochar is a very carbonaceous and incredibly porous substance formed when you burn biomass at a very high temperature with very low oxygen. It's been made for thousands of years, communities have been using it and it's very easy to make. Um, in the left graph you can see that one of the biochars in this study, which was actually with pink manure, was um, really effective at filtering out uh, lead from water. The right chart is, um, it shows that the high temperature biochars were um, as effective as activated carbon in removing synthetic organic contaminants, which are um, often found in pesticides, fertilizers. Many of them have been banned um, in the developed countries, but widely used in India. And exposure to them can cause um, devastation to bodies including cancer, uh, birth defects, neurological defects, and so on. 
So the units that we use are um, really affordable to construct and have a very high capacity, which ensures that we can sell the water at a very nominal price. Um, although the key thing about the design is the fact that it's very intuitive, it's very easy to understand, and uh, we hope that other communities will be inspired and easily replicated. Delhi, my city, has a massive problem of biomass waste as well as invasive species and creating biochar would, uh, would help to alleviate it instead of burning in the landfills like it is currently. So the project, um, it doesn't only um, empower women to become economically, uh, financially independent, but it places them at the forefront of their communities as the water providers. And uh, you see an entire community getting together and uh, engaging in local governance. And uh, this, is, this is citizens taking control of their basic rights, the right to clean drinking water. So thank you for listening. I am really thankful to Young Water Solutions and all the sponsors for supporting the project. And uh, we're in the research and development phase, so we're looking for partners who have access to research laboratories and <coughs> experts with knowledge of biochar and pyrolysis products. So if you find the project interesting, I'd, I'd love to discuss later. Thank you. Thank you for that. We now invite our last uh, fellow, from All right, so everyone is with me. Don't worry, I'm the last one. Then we'll do it in <laughs> Okay, so uh, I am Osama, and I'm a chemical engineer from Pakistan. And my project is about uh, providing the Afghan refugees living in one of the largest. Uh, refugee camps in Pakistan with the cost-effective portable water filters and but before moving on I want you to meet Ali. So who is this boy? I met him in the refugee camp when I was volunteering there. I really want you to have a very close look at his hands. Yeah, they look scary. They are, in, they are really in very bad shape. It's because of a skin bacterial infection that this boy carried by drinking contaminated water. And this is not just the disease, it is the disability that prevailed upon him. It's because whenever he tries to do something with his hands, they get bruised. And it is not only this boy, but the 5,000 refugees living in that camp who are vulnerable to such diseases because they are consuming that contaminated water on a daily basis. So, what I believe is that with the help of my fellows and Young Water Solutions, we finally have a solution to provide to these people. And I brought one filter here so that I can give a physical demonstration that how it actually works. So as you can see here, a really dirty water. So all I have to do is, the usage is very simple. It works without any electricity. So those people, because they don't have access to any kind of electricity, they can use it anywhere anytime, whenever they want. All right, so the physical separation happens here, like the bigger particles, and this is for ultrafiltration to remove the bacteria. So here's to the clean water. Just a little bit more about this. It is really affordable. It removes all the bacteria, like 99.9999%, like the science towards all the bacteria. It is recyclable. And more than 90% of all the components of the filters, they can be made at uh, inside Pakistan. So we are going to give more than 150 uh, community filters to provide uh, the population of 5,000 people uh, with more than 30,000 liter, 30, liters per day of water and 200 filter straws, uh, another module using the same technology. 
to give to the individuals who go out for the search of uh, in the search of job. So this is this is not only about Ali, and this is not only about uh, those 5,000 refugees. It is about all the millions of the people around the world who need this kind of attention and these kind of solutions. And I believe that with your support for the people like us and with your support for the organizations such as Young Water Solutions, we will be able to step into a future where everyone will have access to good health, clean drinking water, and hygienic sanitation facilities. Thank you. Uh, we want to present a very special gift to a very special lady, and for that I need Tejan. I need your help. Uh, once again, good evening. Uh, we really thank you. Uh, we are really thankful to have uh, Antonella as the director of Young Young Water Solutions. She has been working to us like a mom and very close. She cared much about us, and she has been uh, a very grateful to have a fellow youth who is dedicated to others and to change the life of others as her. Well. We can't thank her. We, we, we run out of words to thank her like this. Thank you so much, and thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, thank you so much. Thank you. program. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you so much for, for everything. Uh, it's a, it's a, a very special experience to be able to organize this program. Um, I hope that, these, uh, that the presentations of the fellows have been not only enlightening about the different um, problematics that they have in their communities, but also inspiring as a, as a call to action, as a, as a call to action for all of us to, to think how from our places we can contribute so that more people can have access to water, sanitation and hygiene in the world. So I would like to invite now um, Chantal Amarenisa. Is she here in the, in the room? Yes. Uh, Chantal is a leading water in development cooperation at the European Commission, so I would like to invite her for a, for a very brief um, okay. uh, comment on the presentation. Thank you very much. Um, I have to say that I think that the presentations were absolutely fantastic. I, you know, I am really impressed, not only by the ideas that I've heard coming up um, today, but also the way you've expressed yourselves. I don't think that my generation was as articulate as I've heard all of you be. And that is also extremely important, because if you want to convince organizations like mine that water is, is an important issue that we need to continue to invest in. You need to talk to us. You need to go out um, to see our delegations in your countries and, and speak to them and explain um, your projects uh, to them and why it's so important for the communities that you, you live in, that you come, in, you come from and that you've been working with. Um, so I think that that's one of the big messages um, that I would have. And I would also like to say to, to Antonella and Bart, we've got a meeting actually at the end of um, next week on Thursday where we're going to be talking amongst ourselves about water issues. So why don't you come and join us? It's going to be here in Brussels. Um, and we can organize something because I'd certainly want my team to hear what you've got to say. Um, you'll have to sort of push your way with the, the bunch that we're going to be talking with, but I'm sure you can do it. So thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chantal, for the invitation and the comments. We'll 
certainly be there. Um, for the closing remarks, I would like to invite uh, that, that's, sorry, that's a, the late uh, slide of the thank yous from, from all the fellows and all the languages. Um, and from the closing remarks, we would like to first invite Jo from Good Planet, uh, the executive director of Good Planet. Um, Good Planet is turning 20 years uh, this week, right? Yes. So, I'm very lucky to be here. I'm one of the experienced young people who was able to be here. But I'm not the only one. I see many in the room here because uh, with a group of experienced young people, eh, uh, we supported those young people many years ago with their dream. And to be honest, I'm really, really inspired by all of you. Um, really by all of you. I'm not going to talk about it because it will take too much time. But let's talk about with uh, Ricardo. I will do like Ricardo did. I will talk about my family. Because <laughs> I'm not only director of Good Planet and one of the founding <coughs> members of uh, Young Water Solutions. I'm also a father. I have two children, a girl from uh, 14 years old and a boy 16. Some days I think, yeah, they, they are big now, they are adult, they are mature. You can have the nice discussions with them. I'm very uh, satisfied. The day after I say, wow, well, what the hell, teenagers, very difficult. <laughs> well, over here it's even, it's some, some kind the same, it's also a bit different uh, at home. Because here I really feel like a father, but not a teenager anymore, but an adult child. In fact, uh, 20 years ago we, we got also a dream just like the young people here. We wanted to work on sustainable development and water with young people, and we started. One of our first projects was supported by the European Commission called, uh, it was in French, L'eau un pont entre le nord et le sud, water a bridge between north and south. And that was our first exchange between young people in schools in Belgium, 20 schools in Belgium, 10 from uh, Burkina Faso and 10 from Senegal. That was the very first project of Green. It was called at that time um, that we started. Some years later, uh, in 99, we organized together with uh, uh, Solidarité Europe and more partners the first European Youth Parliament for Water. 80 people from uh, all of Europe coming together, talking, discussing about water topics. A bit later, 2012, it was the first World Youth Parliament for Water, and it was there that Bart yeah, was elected as the first president of the World Youth Parliament of Water. Bart was asked everywhere. He was never in school anymore, in fact. <laughs> True. Guilty as charged. He was asked at European Commission, at uh, ministries all over the world, United Nations, and so on. But one day, Bart was talking to me and he said, well, I have to speak in uh, Japan. Um, once again, United, uh, United Nations Water Conference. But I don't feel it. I don't want to do it. I want to be on the field. And I promised my friend Ilias in Burkina Faso to do, to do something in his school. And we talked about it and Bart said, I'm going to do it. So he answered the United uh, Nations that he wouldn't be there in Japan, in the international conference. And they said, yeah, go for it. Uh, we will uh, make a streaming and we will, you will be our guest in our conference in Japan, live from Burkina Faso. In fact, that's the place and the moment where the Young Water Solutions was born. I say, I said, I'm, I feel like a, a father, um, but now I have real adult children. Um, Good Planet worked for 20 years on the topic of water, but if you see our uh, action plan for 2017-2021, water is not a first priority anymore. I, th I think we can do that now because we have your water solutions. We, with Good Planet, of course, he will be a decent father, we will support you in the future. Um, it's also a very special moment for me today because 
and not only father, good planet and young water solutions. I'm also a member of the Rotary Club uh, Brakels Valley. We have many people here uh, from the Rotary Network. Well, Bart and Antonella and uh, Young Water Fellows, I promise you, we will use our networks to uh, continue providing you with seed, seed funds. Uh, we already did it with students, uh, Rotary Club, and each, each, every uh, Rotary Club, and there are more service clubs here today. We can do something, small projects, seed funds for everyone. And they are not only 13, they are more than 800 all over the world waiting for us. And we will also try with uh, Rotary and several partners over here to scale up some of your projects. Just like we did with the very first project where everything started in Burkina Faso. It was a, a very small project, 2,000 euro for a water pump in a secondary school where our young friend Ilias came from. Well, now that same young guy, Ilias, is coordinating in Burkina Faso a project of more than 120,000 euro and bringing water and sanitation in the whole village where his father came from. So, congratulations, we will be there beside you and we will support you. Thank you. Thank you, um, As you was saying, the, it's not only about the, the, the seed funding that the fellows will be receiving for these projects that they shared with you, but it's about it's, it's an investment also in the, the potential that they have to to scale up these projects later on. Um, and for that we have we want to thank all the, the sponsors, the funding partners of this project. And we would like to invite Christine Derrick, who is director of our main sponsor, um, as uh, Bart mentioned before, Agence de l'Arctic. Cher Antonella, cher Bart et chers jeunes, félicitations pour vos projets. Donc, au nom de l'Agence de Loire, toi Picardie, euh, nous sommes vraiment très très fiers de, de tout ce que vous avez fait et de votre enthousiasme pour l'eau. Uh, Christine asked me to translate, but I think that most of you have understood that uh, Christine said that uh, she's happy on behalf of l'Agence de Loire, toi Picardie, which is the main sponsor of this program, uh, to uh, see this and that she's really congratulating us for uh, the projects. Alors je serai très bref puisqu'il y a eu beaucoup de choses qui ont été dites. Donc nous sommes, euh, enfin, l'agence de l'eau après Picardie soutient les jeunes parce que en fait euh, la politique de l'eau comporte une dimension technique, une dimension scientifique, réglementaire, économique, mais il y a aussi toute une dimension humaine. Et je pense qu'aujourd'hui le fait de d'impliquer les jeunes dans la politique de l'eau remet la dimension humaine à sa place puisqu'en fait l'avenir de l'eau est étroitement lié à l'avenir de à l'avenir des jeunes en fait. I will summarize. Uh, she, Christine, said that the water uh, sector, water community, water as an issue has many dimensions: political, economic, social, regulatory, uh, technical. But there's also a very important human dimension, and the human dimension is to a quite large extent also about young people. And putting young people uh, in the water sector is adding the human dimension of water. Uh, and young people are important for the future of water. Um, merci à Bart et à Antonella d'avoir mené à bien le programme. On en avait parlé il y a un an et c'est fait. Donc bravo. we would like to invite the Rotary Governor of District D2170, uh, Mr. Remy Mani. Um, yeah, Mr. Mani. Uh, this event is organized also thanks to the help of Rotary, so thank you. Thank you. Your Excellencies, dear President and Rotarians, ladies and gentlemen, Rotary International is a world operator in the field of humanitarian and social actions with 35,000 clubs, 1.2 million members, and in 165 countries. The armed wing of Rotary International is our Rotary Foundation. 
which allots millions of dollars every year in six areas of focus, mother and child, health, education, local economy, peace, and last but not least, water. It goes without saying that peace and water are connected topics. A recent investigation showed that water is the set of things which mobilize most the young generation in Rotary. So water will be a first-line Rotary action. I am delighted by the collaboration between Good Planet, Young Water Solution, and two of our best clubs, Rotary Club Reichel Zonvalet and Rotary Club Bruxelles Renaissance. I'm convinced that the pursuit goals will be reached, and I wish you all every success in the cooperation between Good Planet and Rotary International. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Um, I would like to also thank uh, two people that have volunteered for the past two months working a lot to make this program also possible. Uh, that is Rebecca, Bushby, and Matthew here. Now I will invite you all to have a cocktail and to um, exchange with the fellows and, and between you. I have two things, two uh, logistical things. Uh, well, first one is that for the people staying for dinner, you have in your badge uh, the table number. So that is, it's, it's in that blue, it's not very legible, but it's uh, the table number is there. Um, and I also want to say that when you are leaving the room, you'll find in the tables these postcards with a thank you note from, from the fellows and also a po some postcards that you can send your friends for New Year's Eve uh, and that have also our details uh, in case any, anyone can want to do a contribution for the fellows projects. All the contributions go to the projects. So thank you very much for being here again. Thank you. Thank you.